Hey, Aria, what's going on outside? It looks like there's a bunch of ruckus. Nerds on the internet are not happy about the new Lord of the Rings show. Oh, boy. Looks like it's getting pretty toxic out there, huh? Yeah, I don't think it could get any worse. <laughs> Nonsense. Why didn't the Eagles just fly the Fellowship to Mordor? This is the annoyingly articulated nerd plot hole question. It's right up there in my mind with parsecs as time or humans as batteries. And with everyone arguing about the new Lord of the Rings show, it's not everyone, it's just a few people on Twitter and it makes it seem like, it, today is the perfect time to answer this question of nerdy questions with science. And of course, if you don't like what I'm about to say, I'll just go in and delete all the negative reviews. <laughs> Jeffrey Bezos. Now entering the facility. Of course, many, many nerds before us have attempted to answer this so-called plot hole to seemingly no avail. So if we are to add anything interesting to the conversation today, we must take this question as seriously as Viggo Mortensen takes kicking helmets on set. So could eagles take LARPers to Mordor? Giant eagles in the books and films take Gandalf away from Saruman's tower and hobbits away from a lava field in their claws, so why couldn't they just take the whole fellowship from Rivendell to where Agent Smith yells at not Sean Bean? To my elf eyes, this looks like a question of whether or not an actual scaled up eagle could physically carry humanoids any significant distance. Let's begin. The largest of all the eagles in J.R.R. Tolkien's writings was Thorindor, King of Eagles. Tolkien gives this mega raptor a 30 fathom wingspan. Now, if we translate fathoms into a unit that doesn't sound like your grandfather is trying to tell you a boring story, it translates into almost 200 feet. Now, I cannot tell you how ginormous this wingspan is. This wingspan is so ginormous, it easily makes Thorondor, king of eagles, the largest flying thing to ever flying thing. It puts my boy Quetzi to shame here, and he was the largest flyer on earth, but he just had a 10 meter wingspan, not even close to 55. Thorondor and Lord of the Rings eagle wingspans dwarf every other known flyer, and technically it also dwarfs dwarfs. However, the only actual fact or figure we have for these eagles is wingspan, so where do we go from here? Well, thankfully, if Lord of the Rings eagles are just, you know, eagles, then wingspan might be actually all we need. Hey, Arya, can you make it a little bit more um, New Zealand-y in here? One of the very few laws in biology is that as the mass of an organism changes, other aspects of the organism change proportionately. This is called biological scaling, or the study of allometry. Now, allometry can tell you a lot of interesting things, some of which you already know, like how if the length of an organism changes, a similarly shaped organism is going to be heavier, but it can also tell you things that you might not be thinking about on the surface, like how, for example, while all mammals, you, me, a mouse, an elephant, share about the same number of total heartbeats in a lifetime, heart rate scales inversely with body mass. The bigger you are, the slower your heart beats, and this tells us something interesting about lifespan. Thankfully, one of the most basic relationships in all of Allometry can help us out with LOTR's eagles. Jeez, Vigo, my dude, you don't have to kick every helmet you see, man. Jeez. Imagine that we have an organism that is a perfect cube. The mass of this cube organism will be directly related to its volume. So mass is proportional to length times length times length, the formula for the volume of a cube or length cubed. The surface area of this cubimal is then proportional to length times length, or length squared. And the length of the cube is just the length of the cube. So look at this sciency chart. It's trying to relate the properties of animals to their body mass. If the length of a deer bone scales proportionately with its body mass, for example, then the exponent we raise the mass to should be length to the one divided by length to the three, or one third. And look, the data from real life is actually pretty close, indicating an interesting geometric relationship. In fact, we use bone length like this to estimate the body masses of animals we've never even seen before. 
like dinosaurs. We can try the same thing to see if cross-sectional area of muscles also scales with body mass. It should be an exponent pretty close to two thirds, right? Length squared over length cubed and bam, again, the data is pretty close. Data and graphs like these are what scientists use to investigate the interconnectivity of biological structures and systems on this planet. Now, for our purposes today, scientists have also discovered many scaling relationships in the bodies of flyers on this planet. If we peruse the paper called Flight and the Scaling of Flyers in Nature, we can see that the wingspan of every bird on Earth, with very few exceptions, scales proportionately with body mass raised to the 0.39 pretty close to one third. Remember our cube animal? So now what we do is we make this an equation and then we plug in the wingspan of Thorndor, king of eagles, and then we solve it. And we get a mass in kilograms of 29,000 kilograms. This is almost 30 tons. Now, I do not have to tell you that there are no 64,000 pound birds. There aren't even like 100 pound birds. So this is like a humpback whale's amount of mass in Thorndor, king of eagles. Now, now we have that body mass. It's very unrealistic, but we can use it to at least estimate other variables with other scaling relationships and answer today's ultimate question. Vigi, come on, man. How, how'd you even get in here, by the way? Was that Gimli's helmet? Are you kicking Gimli's? And now, a moment of science. Flying has to be one of the most amazing things that animals do. But getting to this point over evolutionary time was not easy. Hundreds of millions of years of cutting all the corners necessary to make flight as we know it today possible. Flight feathers from little spiky tufts of hair on dinosaurs, light beaks from big chompy chomp teeth, hollow bones from thick AF femurs for science's sake. But even though all these corners have now been cut, that doesn't mean that flight isn't intensely metabolically expensive. Birds like hummingbirds need to flap their wings and use so much muscle power so often and so quickly that they are on a metabolic knife edge, always just a few hours from keeling over dead of no sugar and nectar and all the other things that it's trying to get with its pointy beaks that are actually used for stabbing other males in the throat in addition to getting down flout. I, I guess you didn't know that wing power is what's going to be critically important specifically for the feasibility of Lord of the Rings Big Eags. Oh no, looks like everything about that show is still going on outside, huh? Yeah, Elon Musk is talking about casting choices now. Oh, that is, that is not helpful. As we were saying, allometry can tell you about interesting relationships between different aspects of creatures' bodies, like relating body mass to bone length, heart rate, brain size, and more. And what we're gonna do for Thorndor, king of eagles, and similarly sized eagles that were in the movies, I swear that I've seen them, is relate flying body mass to power available and required in flight muscles to see if they can even get off the ground or say, carry some little hairy footmen. So, Peep this chart we're looking at from the same paper from before. This chart has two lines, PA and PR. Now PA is power available from flight muscles we know biologically on this planet. PR is the power required to get off the ground and counteract all the body mass or not. So the space in between these two lines is the body masses of flyers that can actually fly. At the very low end, we have quick and agile hummingbirds that weigh just a gram. And at the far end, we have much heavier birds that basically just glide and do actually have trouble getting off of the ground. Now, where these lines intersect is where there's not enough power from the flight muscles to get off of the ground. PA does not have enough for PR. Now, look at where that body mass is. 10. I don't have to tell you how far away 10 is from 29,000. Thorndor, king of eagles body mass, isn't even on this chart. It's way out, way out there, way in like Middle Earth somewhere. I'd have to walk off your screen just to find it. And so I will. Find me on the dawn of the third day or whatever. I've seen the movies. 
Realistically speaking, nothing as massive as a Lord of the Rings eagle would ever be able to fly. Muscles as we know them simply can't provide that amount of thrust. But even if we give the eagles the B of the D here, they would have to be at their metabolic limit. Not like a quick, agile hummingbird, more like a slow, unmaneuverable glider that rides thermals all day, that can't rise vertically very fast or very far, that can't hover in place to, say, drop a ring in a volcano, that has trouble taking off in the first place. We know this happens to large birds in real life. Look, for some context here, I am heavier than the heaviest flying thing we've ever seen. Me. And though I be thick, this just is not a lot of mass. So, to answer our question, why couldn't the eagles have just taken the fellowship to Mordor? They physically couldn't have. And even if they could have, because magic, they would be so slow and unmaneuverable they'd make easy targets for any of Sauron's roaming Nazgul. Ah! So, that answers it. Arya, are the nerds still arguing outside? It, it must have stopped, right? No. Now they're arguing about the physical abilities of lady elves. But, it, but it's a fantasy story. Anyone can do anything in fan... The eagles couldn't physically take the Fellowship to Mordor. Argue about that, okay? Until next time. God, jeez. Nerd. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join us here at the facility, drape on a silky white lab coat, get videos early, join our members only Discord, get monthly private live streams of yours truly. Not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name right here in every single video. <laughs> as you can see, there's so, so many of you. I don't know how I'm going to pass the time as all of these. Now, if you look at how eagles actually carry stuff or not, it's not like you think if you're still thinking that I'm wrong. The biggest eagles on earth don't pick up and carry their prey. Sure, you can see bald eagles carrying like a little piece of salmon, but comparatively that's not much mass. The largest eagles on earth like throw goats off of cliffs. <laughs> they don't carry them. And in the books, one of the other eagles of the name I can't pronounce is stated to be strong enough to carry a human man, but not for sustained periods. So, think about that. Thanks for watching. Be nice to people online. Dang it.